Good morning, YouTube. It's episode 100. What? Is it really? It's over 100. Oh no. Or it's done over 9,000. We might do 9,000 of these someday. I don't know how long that would take. How many but... have you done on your Hoopty channel? Um, plenty. Yeah? <laughs> yes, uh, a lot. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we are at episode 100 for Good Morning YouTube. And for those of you that have been following since the beginning, thank you so much for watching. Mm -hmm. And uh, for the half of you that haven't subscribed yet, I guess you can hit the button as like a, yay, 100 episodes, <laughs> that would be wonderful. But uh, what is also wonderful is April's Wikipedia page <laughs> has been updated. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it's true. And it's ha does that mean it's official? So yes, I think it is official. Let's say, yeah, you were going to say at 100,000 subscribers, mm -hmm. you're going to be a YouTuber. But uh, yep. when it's on Wikipedia and they say you're currently the co-host of the video blog, Good Morning YouTube, with her boyfriend, Tyler Hoover of Hoobie's Garage. I think that means you're a YouTuber. No, it says a uh, video blog, so I'm a video blogger, not a YouTuber. She won't admit to being a YouTuber. Not yet. Yes. So, that was very exciting. It's official. That makes it official. It's in the yes. Wikipedia. Then you know it's true. Yes, very exciting. And today's episode is very interesting because we have the most reliable cars, according to Consumer Reports, based on 10 years of ownership mm -hmm. and least reliable cars. And Elon was very, very happy about this list. He needed some good press for Tesla mm -hmm. after, you know, laying off 10% of the workers and not meeting sales projections and the price wars where cars are getting cheaper. Right. And also, apparently, he has 60% less Democrats buying his cars because of his politics Okay. Uh, on Twitter or X or whatever. Right. So EVs usually attract a more liberal right. fan base. Mm -hmm. And because Elon is not showing that he's very liberal, mm -hmm. it's sort of conflicting. And it's actually costing him some business, his mm -hmm. views on X and such. But what isn't costing Tesla owners is repairs. Oh, and that's really? what Elon was bragging about, oh. according to Consumer Reports. The average maintenance cost for a Tesla over mm -hmm. 10 years. That's a long time. 10 years. Right. $4,000. Hey, that is amazing. It's like $400 a year for maintenance. <laughs> right. And that made them number one by a lot. Number two was Buick, which you can figure, uh, $4,900 huh. uh -huh. for 10 years. So third, Toyota, the same, $4,900. Lincoln and Ford, about 5,000, and Chevrolet, about 5,000, Hyundai, 5,600, Nissan and Mazda, 57 and 58, Honda, 5,850. So all of them in the four to $5,000 range mm -hmm. to maintain these cars for 10 years, which sounds pretty darn good, right? Right, but then, you know, you have to consider the battery life on a Tesla and to replace, do we even replace batteries on Teslas? Uh, yes, you do. They're supposed to last the life of the car, mm -hmm. but uh, in my experience, about the 10 year mark but right. this is not uh, this is in 10 okay. years not uh, for that not past that but uh <laughs> yeah i had uh, the failure at 10 years old on my model s okay so and that was you know twenty thousand dollars or something like that twenty thousand yeah, dollars you know, for a new battery also, also elon's getting bad press for me because he hasn't got me my cyber truck yet i have the bin yeah it's sitting, I think, in Kansas City waiting for me, waiting on that little rivet to fix right. the uh, acceleration thing. Uh, but no, overall, if you're going to buy a new car and you're just driving around town, the mm -hmm. Tesla can have the cheapest ownership experience ever. Right. Well, and, and where do you bring your Tesla to get it repaired? Like I've heard things where they can come to your house or they just do software yeah. updates. Over the air, they can fix things. Over they the have air. their mobile service. Or Magic. if it's something big, you have to take it to the service center mm -hmm. or... Uh, yeah, ship it off in my case. If it really broke down, I'd have to ship it to uh, Tulsa or Kansas City, like mm -hmm. two or three hours away, but I still want one. I'm still waiting for it. Uh, but the worst offenders are pretty darn funny. Right. So keep in mind, Tesla is number one at 4,000. Number 10 is Honda at 5,850. So here are the top 10 worst ones. Oh no. Okay, ready? And do you have any guesses? Well, I'm gonna say like Land Rover. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're very good. But okay. let's go down the list. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Ten is Subaru, seventy-two hundred dollars a year. I'm surprised about that. Uh, no, it's not surprising no. at all because they all have these boxer engines that sit the wrong way, and the oil leaks just sort of happen. Head gasket right. failures are pretty I rampant. I feel like my dad uh, asks you about that every single time mm -hmm. you see him. <laughs> yes. Yes. So Subaru's long-term ownership, mm -hmm. as cool as they are, not a good prospect. But let's say you want to go for Buicks. We haven't talked about Buicks yet and shopping for them on Auto Tempest. And Jake actually just sent me hmm. a really cool forgotten Buick, what? the Regal GS. Oh no. Which was a turbocharged, little sporty, 
four-door sedan yes. that you could get with a manual transmission. Really? Okay. It was like the second coming of the Grand National, except it was front-wheel drive. Oh. And that's a really neat car. That is cool. And it's probably hard to find with a manual transmission, so the best place to search is on Auto Tempest mm -hmm. because it combines all the major listing sites into one search. Mm -hmm. So you can search Buick Regal, the trim GS, the transmission manual, mm -hmm. hit the button, mm -hmm. and it'll populate all the ones for sale in the country on all the major listing sites. And rather than having to do it on site after site after site to try and find this weird, obscure car, Auto Tempest, you just put the same input, so you do it once, mm -hmm. and you'll find it. And you can see there's actually a few for sale for around 10 grand or under for a really comfortable, supposedly reliable right. manual transmission. Kind of sporty car. Yeah, it's right up my alley. It's pretty good. So check out Auto Tempest. It is linked below and tell your friends about Auto Tempest if they're shopping for a used car because it makes the car shopping process so easy. Can we find a GMX well, on there? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what? Okay. Yes, you can find GMXs Thank on there. You. So Subaru, $7,200. Next up is Mini. Mini mm. Cooper's $7,600. Despite being little itty bitty cars, right, they're, they, be easy. they're BMW platforms. Mm -hmm. They're very compact. They have their issues just the same as BMW's uh, $7,600 a year to maintain. Whew. The next one's a big surprise Acura, even though it's an offshoot of Honda. Mm -hmm. I don't know what issues are going on there. I know Hondas have trouble with transmissions. I don't know what it is with Acuras, but apparently $7,800 a year in 10 years to maintain. Okay. Pretty expensive. Mm -hmm. Infinity's another one which is kind of interesting because Nissan was on the list of the cheapest. Mm -hmm. Infinity's the luxury brand. It's on the list of most expensive. Mm. Why well, I'm not sure. But yeah, $8,500. But then it starts to snowball here. It's really bad. A uh, Volvo, $9,285 a year. Mm -hmm. uh, their cars are pretty complicated luxury machines, a lot of tech that has been kind of buggy and weird. Right. And they did the weird thing where they turbocharged and supercharged their engines at one point, but now I think they're TH hybrid, so it, very complicated. I know I knock Volvo a lot, like who buys a Volvo, and I do think they're very comfortable. They have great stereos, mm -hmm. no. but... Uh, but a lot, $9,285. So we're getting close to $1,000 a year a in maintenance right. uh, on average. Next up, no surprise, BMW, $9,500 mm -hmm. a year. Yeah, we expected them to be on the list. Jake just picked us up from the airport after his, what, third cooling system repair on his E92? Uh, is, is that the number or is it more, Jake? Uh, second. The second? Mm. Okay, yes, uh, cooling system turns to glass and breaks apart. They have their issues with uh, various engine snafus and you name it so yeah. uh, bmw is always going to be on that list audi is above it though nine thousand eight hundred ninety dollars yeah that's a lot for whatever reason they don't design their cars to be worked on at all <laughs> you just flat out came out with it like, no here's the real deal no I mean, Wiz car wizard has done a video where yeah. if you want to do a thermostat uh step one Remove the entire nose of the car. Yeah, that's obnoxious. The bumper, the headlights, mm -hmm. everything, the radiator, like a whole nose has to come off to reach all of these little accessories. Mm -hmm. It'd be one thing if you could reach them, they broke. But since you can't reach them, it's like a multi-hour thing just to get to be able to service these engines. And right. Bad. Yeah, it's awful. Naughty. And all the labor costs with that is ridiculous. Right. So mm -hmm. $9,890 a year, but now... We go into the five figures. Whoa. What do you think is the first car in the five figure bracket? Land Rover? Mm, it's in there, but not. What is it? Mercedes. Well, come on, of course. They just charge more for everything. The best or nothing, and I'm a big Mercedes fan. I have many of their cars, but mm -hmm. yes, their service is very expensive. Their parts are marked up a lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, they certainly are complicated cars and have their fair share of issues, uh, $10,525 spanning 10 years. So mm -hmm. over $1,000 a year average in maintenance. You must expect that when you buy a Mercedes. It's just I not, guess so. you know, some of these other cars you're just surprised by and you don't want to be spending that money because they're more affordable cars, but Mercedes, I get it. You had to retire a Mercedes, right? You dumped I it at did. CarMax? I did, because it wouldn't pass emissions and to be able to fix some sensor on it, it was like, I want to say like $3,500. So it had the check engine light on. Yeah. It was an ML350 or something yeah, like that. Yeah, it was that. an ML350. And in Illinois, you have to have your check engine light off to get a tag. In Kansas, it doesn't matter. There are no mufflers, really? whatever. Like, no, they we don't just, care? They just run what you brung. There's no inspections and that care. kind of stuff. So, yeah. You, I'm glad I moved here. You sold your Mercedes at CarMax. I tr yeah, I just got rid of it. And then I guess I could have did what my dad does when the engine light comes on. 
and put a black piece of electrician's tape over it, so you just don't see it. Problem solved. But he's in solved. Wisconsin, so he can right. get away with that, right? That's true. Yeah, yeah. Illinois is very strict with their emissions. Mm -hmm. yeah. Number two is Porsche, which mm. I thought is surprising, considering they're pretty well-built cars, mm -hmm. but once again, very expensive to service. Right. So it jumps up a lot. $14,000 over 10 years. That hurt. Is, the, is it any specific Porsche? Like the Cayenne or is it just in general? They talk about the 911 being so darn reliable, mm -hmm. but I, it has to be the SUVs. It's the most common thing that is bought now and people mm -hmm. use them as cars. And they have air suspension, they have weird electronics, they have plenty of things, leaks and stuff. I've dealt with it, a lot of it. Uh, yeah. Uh, there was a Cayenne S that had an engine issue early on, but I don't think they have really any serious ones right. now. And do uh, they base it out in like regions even? Like, you know, in the north where there's salt all over that's corroding the cars and mm. causing, does it cause more damage? I, I don't, don't think know. that's as much of an issue nowadays as it was back in the day when cars would rust apart in a few mm -hmm. years, especially these European cars. They're mm -hmm. pretty good at, yeah. at holding up and um, it could be more expensive to work on things once the suspension components get sort of fused from corrosion. Right. Um, but I don't think so under 10 years with modern cars. But uh, yeah, you guessed number one. Yo, of course. That's How much do you think like... the number is for number what one was for Porsche? Land Rover? Porsche was 15,000? 14,090. Oh, is it Land Rover's a big jump up? Maybe. I'm going $17,000. $19,250 yes. for 10 years. So you buy a Land Rover, expect about two grand a year on average, according to Consumer <gasps> Reports, in maintenance and repairs. That's a nightmare. We're Mercedes, like, yeah, I get it. But like, it's Land double. Rover is it's double. insane. Air ride suspension popping, yeah. coolant leaks, engine issues, uh, electronic issues out the yin-yang. I mean, you name it. And the cost to service, the parts, the labor, is very expensive. Mm -hmm. This thing's cool. It's like an old battle tank. It's <laughs> yeah, that seems right. And that's why these things depreciate quite terribly. Yeah. And you see a cheap Land Rover, and you're like, oh my God, I can be Kim Kardashian for like fifteen thousand bucks. I like. Right. And we saw. It's interesting because April's selling her house in Chicago. Yeah. Met with a bunch of realtors. Every single one of them pulls up in a Land Rover. Right. Every single. That's how you know you're a successful real estate agent. It's a status symbol. Mm hmm. But is it really a good thing? Like, do you want a realtor to pull up and clearly they're making a right. bad purchase decisions, Poor decisions right? decisions with maintenance, of course. Yeah. So that is the worst one. I can't believe how bad that is. Tesla, $4,000 in 10 years. Land mm. Rover, almost five times as much, $19,250. Tesla's looking good. Yeah. And happy 100, everybody. Thank you so much for watching.